Now, Oklahoma just passed a bill banning abortions at any point after fertilization. Yes, fertilization. The state already has a Texas-style ban on abortions after six weeks. And it is really one of a cluster of states where abortion access is already severely restricted or even where trigger laws are in place to ban abortion soon after Roe. Well. I, I want y'all to take a look at the screen because this is the distance from southwest Texas to northeast Tennessee, and it is about a 1,000 miles, okay? That's how far some folks could have to travel to get the care that they need. For some perspective, that could be as much as 10 tanks of gas round trip. So, Grace, what are low-income patients who are seeking abortion care supposed to do here? I mean, Simone, this is um, just another way in which uh, Republicans and the far right are wanting to uh, advance attacks against Black and brown people. The truth is that undocumented folks, undocumented uh, people that are seeking abortions aren't able to travel those miles, even the ones that you talk about, because there's um, there's uh, gates and, and other ways in which they're not allowed to pass. And so the reality is, is that um, I and you and many others watching us today deserve the right to have autonomy over our body. That anyone that says otherwise is advancing a very um, destructive um, frame of mind that has cost lives um, and will continue to cost them. So we need we have to stand up against them. I agree with you. I want to, I mean, talking about who abortion care hurts the most, uh, Republican Senator Bill Cassidy of Louisiana, folks, he was discussing the state's high maternal mortality rate. And he said, and I'm going to read this quote, he said, African Americans have a higher incidence of maternal mortality. So if you correct our population for race, we're not as much of an outlier as it otherwise appear. He goes on to say he doesn't want to minimize the issue, but for whatever reason, people of color have a higher incidence of maternal mortality. Now, to let that come out of his mouth is just... <laughs> Unacceptable, okay? Completely unacceptable. And I'm going to have something more to say about that later. But, Charles, what say you? Well, I think that what we are seeing uh, with the courts in general is a push back towards a state's rights stance. And a state's yeah. rights stance in a country that is plagued by all of the isms, racism and sexism, uh, and, you know, and all the phobias of homophobia and whatever, is the most dangerous place to be. It is in that state's right stance that, that Jim Crow was allowed to rise and not be struck down by the courts when the courts had a chance to do so. Because when you allow state-level uh, uh, politicians to dictate what is allowed for a person's body autonomy or not autonomy, then you are in you are in very uh, kind of sketchy area where full equality can be denied and can be legal. And we're seeing that play out in the abortion uh, arena, but we've already seen it play out on the voting rights arena when they mm -hmm. uh, when they stripped uh, the Voting Rights Act, and we could see it play out on things like, uh, you know, uh, uh, gay marriage or whatever. I think we have to really register the danger zone that we are in with the courts because of the position that they are taking and that it will, and these things will, many of them, disproportionately impact people, like you were just saying, African-Americans, low-wage people, Hispanics, other racial or ethnic minorities or uh, minorities who are, uh, present differently in terms of sexuality or orientation. I, let's let's stay on and talk about the courts because um, I'm from Nebraska and in Nebraska judges are appointed they are not elected and it wasn't until mm -hmm. that I worked a, a race in college when I was in ten in Tennessee that I realized that judges were elected in some places across the country um, but in many places judges are appointed if we're talking about the federal bench okay uh, it is the, the whoever is in the White House at that time to put judges on the bench. How do we combat the crisis in the courts that we are seeing in so many places across the country? Well, I I, everybody stuck. Important. Look, people were stuck. Everybody was like, I don't even know how well, to combat the question. crisis in the courts. <laughs> it's just people stuck. I guess it was open-ended. Grace, I want to hear from you. Then, then Charles, I want to hear from you. Then, Congressman, you'll have the last word on it. Let's go. <laughs> yeah, I think that this, uh, what you're describing is really a crisis that we're facing as a country. As an undocumented woman, a DACA recipient, I understand the impact that courts have on our lives. 
But I also know that there are many, many people right now organizing in your state of Nebraska, in my state of Texas, and all around to ensure that there are more and more people packing the courts, more people that understand their own duty and do not use it as a political core to advance a white nationalist agenda. And so I am here as part of United We Dream and a progressive movement that are ready to take on that fight. Hmm. Charles? And we, well, and we I, respect I, uh, Simone I, to um, the uh, leaked uh, decision that the, the court may make public uh, soon. I think that, uh, and my hope is that it will uh, mobilize uh, and energize the uh, electorate. Uh, oftentimes, the same electorate is what uh, are people who have wanted Congress to address uh, critical issues. Uh, like jobs and the economy, inflation, uh, housing, uh, and education, and debt relief, uh, student debt relief, I think there's a potential for uh, people learning about the potential and a subsequent uh, uh, decision by the court that could energize. And I think that will have a bearing on uh, who is elected president uh, in the next few years, and certainly the makeup of Congress. Of course, uh, the outcome of uh, pending elections in states like uh, Georgia and uh, Texas will also have a bearing. That's why we need to be watching closely. But I think that all of this underscores the importance that elections have consequences and that we better get ourselves to those uh, voting po uh, polls. You know, Charles, they're telling me we have to go, but you introduced this conversation about the courts, and so I'm going to have you back, my friend, so we can talk more at length about this, because I do think it's a crisis that people aren't paying enough attention to. Illinois Congressman Chewy Garcia, Charles Blow, and Grayson Martina Rosas, thank you all very, very much. We'll have you back soon. <laughs>